Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Well, today in question period, the Liberal government got absolutely hammered about questions regarding uh, gun control uh, in the House of Commons. The biggest issue was the street crime that's been going on. It's happened in Laval, it's happened in various places in, in Ontario in recent days. There's been a lot of shootings. Uh, people are getting hurt, people are getting shot, and the government is being taken to task uh, by the Conservatives and by the Bloc Québécois because three of those shootings happened in the province of Quebec, in Laval, a suburb of Montreal. And wouldn't you know it, our Liberal government was nowhere to be found. Matter of fact, all the questions that really mattered today in question period were handled by parliamentary secretaries. A parliamentary secretary is basically a stand-in for when the ministers of whatever, in this case probably public safety and, and uh, minister of justice and whatnot, are not present in the House of Commons for question period. Well, I know it's Friday, I know it was a beautiful day here in this region of the country, uh, maybe the ministers decided to take the day off, uh, go enjoy the sunlight, or whatever the reason, they weren't there. And instead, they left the parliamentary secretaries, who do know pretty much about uh, the bills and whatever, uh, but they're not the ministers, and they can't really answer the questions with any degree of, uh, of definitive response. Uh, just leaving all your parliamentary secretaries to take the heat, to me it shows a sign of weakness. You know the heat was coming, you didn't show up, you went off to do other things, and you left your parliamentary secretaries holding the bag. Here is what question period looked like today when it came to the gun control issues. Oral questions, question oral, honorable the deputy. The honorable member for Louis Saint Laurent. Monsieur le Président, cette Mr. Speaker, this week, there were three shootings in three days in Laval in residential neighborhoods. This could have ended very badly for families. And what the police are telling us is that this was about street gangs using illegal weapons. We know that shortly there will be new measures from this government on firearms. Can this government tell us how these new measures will reduce the crimes committed by street gangs and illegal weapons. The Honorable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We, we are always disturbed when we hear of, of people who have lost their lives to gun violence. In fact, the burden of injury from gun violence is something that is con of a concern. It's a public health concern to all Canadians. Our approach to firearms is one of common sense safety measures. And these measures that were introduced this week will keep firearms out of the hands of criminals, codify businesses, do diligence practices, and support law enforcement in tracing ev efforts. It's another tool in our arsenal to keep communities safe, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Well, Mr. Speaker, none of that is true. The new measures that will start on May 18th will directly attack law-abiding businesses and firearms owners. And yes, there are many of those, Mr. Speaker. Unfortunately, this government is not attacking the real criminals, street gangs and the users of illegal weapons. Why is this government once again bothering law-abiding firearms owners and not doing something about real crime? Speaker, and our government is firmly committed to building safer communities. To reduce gun crime, we must address the social conditions that lead youth to join gangs. That's why we're working closely with municipalities in Quebec and across the country and Indigenous communities to provide $250 million over five years to bolster gang prevention and intervention program. And I would remind Conservatives that when we studied Bill C-71, they put forward amendments that would have removed punishment for making a false statement to provide a license, tampering with licenses, unauthorized possession of ammunition and more. Thank you, Mr. Right. Speaker.
The Honorable Opposition House Leader for the Official Opposition. Yesterday, a 17-year-old was shot in the Liberal-held riding of Don Valley East in the parking lot of Victoria Park Collegiate. Instead of dealing with the real problem infesting the streets of Liberal-held ridings, gang and criminal illegal handgun use, these Liberals would rather engage in cheap political stunts by attacking dunk, duck and deer hunters to make it look like they're doing something when in fact they're solving nothing. Why won't Liberal MPs act as emboldened as the gangs and the criminals in their ridings and go after those who are shooting up their streets with illegal handguns? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And rather than playing political games around gun violence, we're taking concrete action to keep communities safe, to keep the citizens of Canada safe, and taking a comprehensive approach to firearms, one that includes investing in communities, investing in housing, investing in ensuring that crimes are not cross guns are not crossing the border by investing in CBSA, investing in cuts that the Conservatives, when they were in government, they cut CBSA. We've reinvested to keep Keep the guns up from coming into Canada. That's right. The Honourable House Leader for the Official Opposition. This week, a shooting happened in the Liberal held riding of St. Catharines during a jewelry store robbery. The pattern of gun crime in Liberal ridings has nothing to do with farmers, hunters, sports shooters, or collectors, or scary military assault weapons. It's gangs, criminals, and illegal handguns. Even with clear evidence of illegal handgun shootings in their ridings, Liberals, including the MP from St. Catharines, spread disinformation on what the real cause of gun crime crime is in this country. Why are Liberals spreading disinformation when it comes to the real cause of gun crime in Canada? And worse yet, why are they doing nothing to solve the problem? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And this is the fourth time I've stood up here and been accused of doing nothing. And I take great offence to the fact that this government is taking concrete steps that will actually make a difference to keep Canadians safe, rather than playing politics on the issue of guns and just parroting the lines that they get from the gun lobby. Aside from that, good news in Quebec. I have been running around for two years, walking in and out of stores, looking like this. I know, pretty ugly. Not that this is much better, but this is, is just downright ugly. The good news in Quebec, as of midnight tonight, these things are no longer required. Uh, as a matter of fact, as you can tell, I'm not at home. I'm in a motel tonight because uh, I'm out of town uh, on business. and. Today, when I checked into the motel, uh, the staff weren't wearing these. I mean, it's not a huge home motel, uh, like a dozen rooms or so, a little street side thing. Uh, but the staff was not wearing these when I walked in. They're, they're, I think everybody's fed up with this in Quebec. It's about time they got rid of them. Uh, as we speak now, it is, what, uh, about 9.30 at night when I'm making this video. I'm in for the night. I have everything that I need here at the hotel. Uh, I'm going to be doing some editing and stuff and then heading off to bed. This is done. So I've never been so happy to just... I can't even rip it because these things are half plastic. There's a whole other issue about the plastic too, but that'll save for another day. Take out the old pocket knife. Cut these puppies up. I'm done with them. I'm finished with them. I'm fed up with them. There you go, Francois Legault. That's what I think about your mask mandate over the past two years. It's been ridiculous. On top of that, at least my kids, my kids can finally go to school, get on a school bus without wearing a mask as of Monday. Uh, it's been long enough. I don't know why the science is different tonight than it will be tomorrow morning uh, or last week from it will be tomorrow morning. It doesn't make much sense to me. But at least... At least that mandate is coming down. And for anybody out there that thinks that the Freedom Convoy failed, you're absolutely mistaken. The Freedom Convoy started something, and it started something before it even got to Ottawa. These mandates are coming down. I know the federal government is still sticking to their ridiculous idea of, you know, making sure that truckers are vaccinated to cross the border. I believe, I'll double check this, but I believe 
they're still looking into a, a vaccine mandate for interprovincial trucking. How they're going to deal with that and how they're going to enforce that is beyond me, uh, unless the police are pulling over every single truck with out-of-province plates on it. That would be the only way I could see to, to try and enforce something like that. Again, I'm not sure that they're still going through with this. I think I saw something the other day. I'll go back and do some research, and I'll get back to you next week. But as of now, as of midnight in a couple of hours, some good news. Mask mandates in Quebec are out. They're gone. Finally, we can see each other's smiling, beautiful faces again. In the meantime, remember, an informed Canadian is a prepared Canadian. See you next time around.